we discuss the Swahili societies of East Africa. Islam was not only a dominating influence in the Sahara and the Sahel, but it was making a major impact in the port cities of East Africa. The Christian-influenced kingdoms of Aksum, Kush, and Nubia eventually merged into their last stronghold of Ethiopia. Islam was willing to concede this point in return for a dominating presence in the port cities that ran from the Horn of Africa and the Gulf of Aden to Mozambique and Madagascar. Once established, Islam made more of an impact on the coastal cities rather than the rural areas as they connected the cities to trade routes across the Indian Ocean. Bensu populations had already been settling in these regions for centuries and making civilization on pottery and iron. Islamic traders called the cities along this route the Zenj. Stated that Islam had a much harder time reaching the people in the interiors of the east. Their Bantu farmers were mixed with older inhabitants who'd migrated from the Arabian Peninsula. The hundreds of different ethnic groups in East Africa were mostly a pastoral people, living in stateless societies, hunting, gathering, and raising animals. They formed subsistence farming communities, growing grains, yams, melons, and beans for their livelihood. These older stateless societies also were not willing to give up their traditional life to the beliefs of Islam. Especially difficult was the idea of abandoning ancestor veneration and animism to submit to a monotheistic god. Also, these older Bantu civilizations were tied to a less literate society. For them, oral tradition and storytelling were more important than developing a written language like you'd find in one of the state societies. The increase of Islamic expansion did not take away the increase of traditional African music, art, and beliefs. Many of the port cities found Islam to be an attractive religion that not only allowed the idea of equality, but to expand power and trade. Unlike the Islamic-based state empires of the West, like Mali and Ghana, the eastern regions solidified power in city-states like Kilwe, Mogadishu, Zanzibar, and Mombasa. Each of these cities was run by a powerful Islamic family, in contrast to the expansive western empires run by caliphs and emirs. The merger of Bantu and Arabic cultures became known as Swahili. The eastern port cities benefited from being in the middle of the interior and their gold supplies and overseas empires like China that demanded it. It allowed these port cities to trade in ivory, African animals, iron, and slaves. Camel caravans went in and out laden with the wealth of the east to trade for Chinese silks and porcelain and Persian rugs. Cities like Kilwe would be so wealthy that its houses, palaces, and mosques would have hundreds of rooms with porcelain and indoor plumbing. Up and down the coast, the wealthy Islamic families built large mosques and palaces to show their faith and wealth. Over time, the culture of East Africa reflected the Swahili merger of traditional and Islamic beliefs. For instance, families now trace lineage through traditional African matrilineal lines and Islamic patrilineal lines. Arabic became the written language of the region, and a class-based social structure began to replace the egalitarian communities in the villages.